All right, y'all, Fuzzy Biker here. It is uh, about two o'clock in the afternoon, 47 degrees on a Sunday. We're in the Royal Enfield Himalayan 2021. I think we are gonna, let's go this way today. We're gonna take a ride and uh, I'm gonna tell you all about the problems I've had with this bike. I've got uh, almost 16,000, 15,700, something like that on it. Hey, it's slick out. And uh, anyway, I wanted to tell you about some of the biggest problems I've had with this bike. I've had a few. This is a beautiful bike, but it's got some warts. And uh, I think there's five major ones, if I remember right. Hey, let's not get ran over by that hot rod. And I think I have a bonus one at the end, so we'll uh, we'll figure all that out. Nice day for a motorcycle ride. Wahoo! One of the versatilities of this little motorcycle is you can run, you know, I just ran 15, 16 miles of uh, pavement to get to this gravel. And then you just hop right on the gravel and go. Got a walker down here with the dog. Uh, so, I was gonna talk about the five problems. The biggest, the biggest one, I'll start with the biggest one. When I picked the bike up, we had a, it had the stalling issue, the uh, infamous stalling issue everybody talks about. Hey, husband and wife out with a pup. Anyway, uh, that means you get on the bike, you start to go, you pull the clutch in for some reason or another, you know, stop sign, whatever, and the motor just dies. You have to hit the start button and go. First day I did that, within the first 100 feet, I did that a couple times and uh, talked to the dealer. They said, ah, it'll come out of it. Just ride it. I did that and it did come out of it. Within a couple days, it was almost gone, but it was still there and it seemed to just, it was a constant and uh, it wasn't enough of a, it wasn't enough of a nuisance for me to go back to the dealer specifically for that reason look at these elk here on the side whole herd of elk oh man I didn't mean to scare you guys isn't that pretty that's amazing this guy raises these out here uh, about 30 of these got loose one day and they were all female anyway they got they got them all back except for about three nice little boy he's got a, quite a shangri-la out here doesn't he look at those horses and anyway uh the three that were the three that never made it home <laughs> i don't know whatever happened to those but there's uh they were all female so there's no chance of them breeding in the wild get back our native iowa elk population right look at that isn't that cool well, anyway so uh Finally, the stalling problem, I took the bike back into the dealer. They uh, immediately, this Baxter cycle, they immediately rushed it into the back, did some sort of hocus pocus, brought it back out, and the bike ran like a whole new motorcycle. It was awesome. Um, about 90% of the problem was gone. Now they had told me if the problem persists, come back. Hey, big dog. So, uh, you know, it wasn't much of a problem. It was barely there at all. And I put up with it for a while and I brought it back finally and uh, they ran in the back room. You know, like I said, it was just every now and then I'd come to a stop sign, pull in the clutch, and thing would just die. Anyway, they ran in the back room, did some sort of wizardry. Half an hour later, stalling problems gone, and it's never returned. St gone, never to return, just gone. And, uh, you know, I appreciate that good service. So when you buy a motorcycle from a dealer, you know, find out what kind of service you're going to get from them. That's uh, a pretty important thing. You know, you're buying more than a motorcycle, you're buying a mechanic service and all that neat stuff. Uh, so that's the uh, stalling problem issue. What did they do to fix it? I don't know what they did to fix it, to be honest. Um, I know they hooked it up to some computer gadgetry and uh, adjusted this and adjusted that and all that kind of stuff. Stuff beyond my capabilities. Uh, what did I do to fix it? I didn't really do anything at all to fix it. I uh, keep my bike well maintained. I, I put one of those Iridium spark plugs in. Not that that made any difference. I don't think it did, but uh, makes me feel better <laughs> anyway it's been a great bike since then in that sense other problems in this just beautiful countryside this is gorgeous Guthrie County I think Guthrie County is one of the prettiest counties in uh, Iowa and it's one of our hidden secrets um, you know all the beauty is rugged in Guthrie County and you have to work to see it so uh, you know, to somebody like me, it's just awesome. And it's a great place to ride motorcycle for sure. If you, if you have an adventure bike, a Himalayan especially in particular, this, uh, this is where you want to be, Guthrie County. Anyway, uh, second big problem I had with the bike 
was vibration. Now this is a big single, 411cc single cylinder. It does have the uh, kind of rotating shaft. So when I say vibration, I don't really mean in the pegs or in the seat or in the uh, handlebars. Uh, what I had was, I had the bike for quite a while and uh, look at that hawk. And I started getting, I started getting, uh, well, let's see, do we go straight here? That is, uh, I'm anti-mud, so I think I'm going to skip the mud today. But anyway, I started getting uh, rattling in the front end of the bike. And I drove it down to my good friend Everts, and he's got a little machine, and we looked, we used that to look at it, and we found the, uh, in the front end in the headlight, there's a, uh, I don't know, it's like a passing light or what it is, but it had cracked, and that's actually a known issue. So we glued it back together, and I drove it like that, drove it up to Baxter Cycle, and they offered to replace it, and uh, I said, just give me a new bulb. So they gave me a new bulb, and I replaced it. Uh, at the same time, when I got the new bulb, I got myself one of those wire grills to cover the headlight. And I got the basic one, you know, and I wish I'd have paid more money and got a better one. But what I bought when I got that was uh, some rattling problems, and it's pretty common among Hemi riders with that kind of a head, that kind of a grill cover. Maybe I can get a picture of that and put it on here somewhere. But uh, so I put rubber tubing around the edges, and that cured that. You know, a pretty simple fix. You know, a dollar and a half to fix it, and that took care of that vibration problem. Um, I got a new windshield for the bike, which had its own problems, unrelated to the Himalayan. And uh, then related to the Himalayan, the mounting brackets, this is a very large, the biggest windshield I could find. These, the mounting hardware was not sufficient for the windshield and it deteriorated and the windshield started rattling and uh, I tightened it up and the very next day it was loose again. Uh, I called the uh, CalSci, Cal I think is the brand. I called them, they gave me some options, told me they'd ship me out some hardware. Well, the hardware was just a little bit longer bolts and some lock nuts, so I just went, and some pan washers. So I just went down to the hardware store and got myself some of that stuff. Uh, it cost me, you know, two or three dollars, and uh, this guy here usually has some old cars sitting out back. Let's see what he's got today. Yeah, there's some. He looked like he cleaned up a little bit out here. I wonder what the deal is there. Anyway, put that hardware in, and that took care of that problem. So, stalling problem number one, biggest issue. I think that is uh, most prevalent, the 2001 model, that's what I ride, a 2001. I think by 2002 it was gone. I hope it was anyway, I don't hear very much about it. Do you have a 2002 or, or newer, 2003, uh, let us know what your experience has been with the stalling. As far as the vibration goes, I don't know what to say about that. Um, you know, it, it's not a rider vibration problem, it simply was a front end vibration problem and I don't know if I aggravated it by putting on the bigger windscreen or the uh, you know, the cover that I put on, but uh, either way, I've got it solved for now anyway. You know, uh, it says 15,700 miles, so I, I, must, I must be doing something right, right? <laughs> okay, where are we at? We're deep in the heart of Guthrie County. One of my favorite haunts for motorcycle riding, by the way. I just love these roads back here. I think this is the old... I don't know if this is the original, but I think it's one of the old Sheeter, Sheeter Prairie, Sheeter Farms. Sheeter was a, one of the pioneers, early families that came into Guthrie County. And uh, I think this might have been either the original farm or, uh, you know, one of the original ones. That building there uh, used to be all wood on the outside, now it's all steel. They, they build it up. If you don't put steel in these old buildings, they're, they're really too hard to maintain. They're very expensive to maintain. It's really about the only way you can save them. But look at all these cows. That's what hamburger looks like before it goes in a package. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. Ha <laughs> ha. All right. Problem number three I had. And I kind of went back and forth on what to make number three. I'm going to say the seat. Number three was the seat. And the seat that comes with the bike, I feel, is a very nice, comfortable seat. Um, about 8,500 miles, actually well before that, but by about 8,500 miles I'd had enough of it. It, uh, it had literally, the foam had just broken down, it gotten soft, and you'd sit on it and you'd go right, you know, right, to the, right to the bottom. So I bought what they call a touring seat. I got that, uh, it's a Royal Enfield version touring seat. 
and it worked great it was more comfortable it was a little firmer i think it was an improvement over the stock seat and i think if you rode you know most people don't ride their bikes as much as i do most him landowners ride a couple thousand miles a year I, I would guess or less but i think if you did that you'd be fine um in my case i broke the seat down again it started getting soft and i just opted for the uh i think it's uh seat concepts is the name of the seat company so i i'd ridden a few himalayans with that particular seat i had not ridden any other brands uh, there are other brands out there i'd love to have tried those but i didn't have that option I rode three or four bikes with the high seat concept seat and uh, I liked it. I wanted a higher seat because I wanted to look over my windshield a little better. This is a very tall windshield and I want, you know, I wanted the high seat was supposed to raise the seat height by an inch and a half. So I got that seat. I got on their website, you know, it asked you what you want, firm, soft, high, low, blah, blah, blah. I got, I got firm, it's firm. I got extra firm and I got uh, high seat, you know, the high seat. So a couple weeks later, a package arrives in the mail and I knew it would be like this. It was a kit. It wasn't actually the seat. It was a check of foam, a seat cover, and a protective uh, water cover. And some directions. Now, I talked to a couple guys about putting it together and, you know, had the uh, rough idea. Um, read the directions. You had to get some adhesive to glue the foam down. You had to get some a stable gun to staple it together and you know there was a little bit of anxiety on my part and uh, so I, I got that stuff and um you know literally within half an hour i had it all done you you take these old seat you pull the foam off it it literally comes off in one big chunk you glue the new foam on let that dry and then you put the plastic over it then you staple the new seat cover over it and you're done and uh you know easy peasy as my grandson would say easy peasy and what I like about the, the seat concept seat is not only is it taller, <clears throat> excuse me, but it's very wide in the back. It's substantially wider in the back. And I'm substantially wider in the back than I used to be. So I appreciate the uh, substantially wider seat. But no, it's, it's taller, it's firm, it's comfortable. Uh, I've got a little over 100 miles on it, but I suppose, by now. Uh, yeah, if you count it today, for sure. And uh, no regrets. I like it. Excuse me. So the seat was uh, problem number three. Problem number four. What would be that? What would that be? <laughs> well, I uh, went to put gas on my bike one day and it turned the key and the gas would just popped right open. Pop. Big old pop. Did that a couple times. And uh, I thought, well, what the heck, you know. Now I ride quite a bit. Sometimes, you know, two one or two tanks a day at least and uh some days more than that in the summertime anyway anyway um went out to my bike one morning and there was a little trickle of gas on the floor below it and took the seat off and uh, there was a little crack in the uh, tank and it was just oozing out barely so i took a bar of soap and i sealed it up and uh ran it in the baxter cycle and they said oh man the evap system is plugged up so they unplugged my evap system and they uh ordered a new tank a week later I had a new tank they put it in I just left my bike there they gave me a bike to ride that I ended up buying I think they knew what they were doing when they did that and uh, anyway um, so that would be problem number four right that that was one of the few warranty issues isn't this just beautiful the beautiful area here just gorgeous there's an old saw sawmill here somewhere we'll try to find that uh, let's see uh, something to look at if you're a car guy is on the right side of the road here. There's an old Monte Carlo Was that a turtle back there? Yeah, right there uh, We've tried to buy that a friend of mine tried to buy that and the owner just would have nothing to do with it. Apparently it's anyway um, I think there's a sawmill right around this corner. Let's see if we can find that real quick That's the bones of a hundred year old sawmill I don't know if it's a hundred years old, but that's the bones of a sawmill anyway. Pretty cool, huh? Hey, this penlock is just not working. I'm not happy with this at all. Anyway, so uh, problem number four was a gas tank. On the right here is Sheeter Prairie, and uh, a friend of mine used to own this. Well, her father did actually, and uh, he 
bought it in the 50s and uh, it became a park here in Guthrie County. He was quite a character, is my understanding. I don't really remember him. He was my father's best friend, but uh, let's see if we can find this place. I want to turn around and go back the other way. Oh, I don't have to go back. There's a road over yonder. Anyway, there it is. Oh, Sudcliffe, Sudcliffe. Cedars where we were before. There's a pond up yonder. Uh, nice little walking trail around that, about half a mile, I suppose. Okay, so we talked about the... Uh, we talked about the tank already. So we've got stalling, vibration, the seat, the tank, and... Uh, now this one is really not a problem, this next one. This next one is more of a... You should be aware of it if you own a motorcycle with one giant cylinder. Like any, any big single cylinder motorcycle, you should know this one. And the reason I'm bringing it up is because I think uh, in this modern age, people forget about this one. Um, Himalayans use oil. Hey, look at that deer. Look at that deer. Where there's one, there's usually more. I don't see more. And away he goes. I uh, swerved to miss a deer last summer and uh, ended up in the hospital for 10 days. So I'm pretty leery of deer right now. <laughs> I did that on my Triumph. I've got a beautiful 900 Triumph. Anyway, so oil level. Um, if you own a motorcycle like this, you should check your oil regularly. Uh, it's very easy to do. I just put it I, you know, in my garage. i got a flat floor. I put it on the center stand. Got something in my eye here. I just put it on the center stand and uh, there's a side window on the side. Um, if you ride your Himalayan hard, a lot and hard, you know, a lot of guys will buy these. Uh, I got a friend in particular I'm thinking of, Dan, you know who you are. And he, uh, you know, he's open up on the highway all the time when he's on it. And uh, it'll use oil. And uh, you got to keep track of that. You know, this motor only uses, uh, only has a quart and three quarter of oil, I think, in it. So, uh, on this particular motorcycle, I change the oil by 3,500. I have to add, you know, a tenth or two, a couple tenths, two or three tenths of oil to get her back to uh, to high. So when I when I change the oil, I put it to the top of the line, and by 3,500, I'm at the bottom of the line. I can't decide if I should turn around. No, we'll go forward. And so by 3,500 miles, I'm probably at the uh, bottom of the line. So I add a couple, uh, you know, tenths of oil and bring it back up to normal. And uh, that'll usually hold me until I get to 5,000 miles. And that's when I usually change my oil, about 5,000 miles. The book says 6,000, but I go to five. Um, but that's something you really need to keep track of on a Himalayan. These big single cylinders, you know, uh, if you run them, especially if you run them hard, you really need to keep track of uh, oil consumption on them. It's just good, good, uh, you know, especially with the very low amount of oil in the engine case. You know, if you're only running, like I said, a quart and three quarters of oil, if you lose, you know, three tenths of a quart of oil, you're, you're down pretty low. And then if you run hard on top of that, you can cause some problems for yourself. So I'm just saying that's something you should be aware of when you have a motorcycle like this. Like I said, another great thing about this bike is you can hop on the uh, pavement with no trouble. Okay, last thing to think about on a motorcycle like this. I don't know, this is really not a problem. I think this is a problem in terms of when people go to buy this motorcycle, they look at this and they think, oh, well, I can't buy it. It's only got 24 horsepower. How can a motorcycle with 24 horsepower be any fun? So when I'm calling that a problem, I'm calling that a, uh, it's more of a psychological problem. Uh, if you plan on buying this motorcycle to drive pavement all the time, then you're buying the wrong bike and this is a problem. If you're buying this motorcycle to do like this, adventure ride or you know gravel road ride or back road ride or go camping and you know rough roading it. If you're going to be on roads like this 50% of the time or more or even 40% of the time or more, it's got plenty of power. Uh, I, you know, it's got 24 foot-pounds of uh, torque. I think it's about, might be 25 foot-pounds. Anyway, it's got about as much torque as it has horsepower. Look at these old, the bones of an old farm here. But uh, I think a lot of people go to buy this bike or go to look at this bike and they see the low horsepower number and they think there ain't no way. You know, I got to have more power. 
and uh, what I'm saying is you're missing you're missing an opportunity if you do that if you go that route because uh, usually I would take this road to the right here but I am just not even gonna I don't want to play with the mud and uh, so we'll just go this way no so I think uh, horsepower is an issue for a lot of people and that number is an issue for people they say oh it's getting low horsepower. How can that thing be any good? Uh, what I will tell you is this this bike has more fun per horsepower than any motorcycle I've ever owned. I've owned a lot of bikes. I've got some really nice bikes in my garage right now. Uh, I ride a lot of bikes. I ride, you know, the uh, most powerful bike I rode last year at 178 horsepower. And I'll tell you, the funnest bike I ride is this particular, this, hey, look at that. This and I'll tell you, the funnest bike I ride is this Himalayan. It's it's the motorcycle I just enjoy the most. It just seems to do everything I like to do. It fits my, you know, it fits me well, basically. Um, if you want to go racing with your friends, it's the wrong bike. If you want to use it as a true dirt bike, it's the wrong bike. If you want to, uh, you know, like I said, it, it'll do anything except, if you want to go fast, it's the wrong bike. If you want to enjoy motorcycle riding, on pavement and on roads like this and uh, maybe a little back roading or you know not real dirt dirt biking but uh you know single tracks and things like that this is a great bike for that this is a wonderful bike for that um it's got eight inches seven or eight i think it's seven inches on the back eight inches on the front for suspension travel it's got eight and a half inches over eight and a half inches of uh, ground clearance it weighs uh i think it's 440 pounds stock it's got excellent fuel mileage it's over few, over a four gallon fuel tank and it gets you know i get consistently over 50 miles a gallon so that's 200 mile range and, and by the way 200 miles in a day on this bike is a, is a pretty good day if you've, you've, you've done a lot of riding um so the idea that you know a 24 horsepower motorcycle can't do it is just wrong it it's uh go out and ride one um Try to ride one more, you know, 20 miles, go to the dealer, see, see if you can get them to let you ride it for half a day or something, if you're serious about buying one. And uh, what you'll find is it's just an absolute joy, particularly on gravel. If you had a dirt bike growing up, I had a dirt bike when I was growing up, I had a little uh, Kawasaki KE100, I drove the snot out of that thing all over these, these kind of roads. And this bike really reminds me of that, but growing up. And uh, what I really like about this bike is I can get on the pavement and go 70, you know. I can get on the interstate and go 70, 75, you know, up to, uh, I, I never go more than 10 miles of interstate, but, you know, it can do just about everything. And it does it well. Uh, longest day ride I had on this bike was 377 miles, which by the way was far too many miles on this bike in one day. Um, I, th I think 250 miles on this bike in a day is a pretty darn good day. But the, no, so that's that, those are the uh, those are what I would call the problems with this bike. You know, uh, the good parts of this bike are I've got. Just watch any of my other videos. I just gush about how much I love this motorcycle. So, <laughs> if you are on the fence about buying a particular bike, you know, on-off bike, uh, consider this bike. I did look at many other motorcycles, including the KTM 390, um, the Husqvarna 401, the uh, KRL, and I decided against all of those for particular reasons. I think those were all grand motorcycles, very good bikes. Uh, I just felt that this one was better for my purposes, which is this kind of riding. The uh, other reason I, I really went with this bike is the dealer network. Um, I shouldn't say dealer network, but I should say Baxter Cycle. Uh, my experience with that bike shop has just been top notch in every way. Buying experience, warranty work, um, just every way. They're friendly, they're, they answer the phone, they take care of the people, not just me, but everybody. So uh, that's one of the, you know, that. And the other, other big reason I bought this bike, and this was a really big reason, was the simplicity of it. It's an air-cooled single with two valves, you know, single cylinder with two valves, an intake and exhaust. I can do my own maintenance with ease, literally. With, it takes longer to pop the tank off this bike than it does to actually adjust the valves, for instance. Ah, that's not, it's, it's close, it's close. I, I don't, you know, that's, uh, <laughs> that's probably an exaggeration, but uh, it's really close. It's just a very easy thing to do. You know, maintenance on this bike is a, is a, is a snap. You know, oil changes, 
absolute breeze. Put on, it's got a center stand. I can adjust. I can adjust my chain, lube my chain, change the oil with ease because it's got a center stand. Uh, you know, adjust the valves, and probably I can probably change the oil and adjust the valves in 45 minutes. So you know, and that's just a dawdling old man doing that. So it, it works very well. Uh, upgrades to the bike that I've done. I think you can see them. I did the seat. I told you about that. I put the bigger windshield on because I wanted more wind protection. Um, I'm running uh, Dunlop Trailmax Mission tires, front and back. And the uh, reason I did that was I ride a lot of miles. The original Seats that came with this motorcycle were very good tires. They had a great feel. Uh, however, I wore the back one out in 4,400 miles. Then I got a big staple in it. And uh, I, I wanted a more aggressive, heavier duty, tire with more longevity and that's where I got the trail max mission I ran the sea out on the front for about 12,000 miles I think it was 12,000 and I got a trail max mission for that on there now and I expect that to just go forever you know at least 10,000 if not more the back the back tire on this bike has got uh, well over 11,000 miles on 11,300 miles on it and I just ordered a new back tire for this a new trail max mission so anyway, conclusion, does this pig have warts? Yes, it does. And I told you about the five worst ones. And I gave you the bonus one, which uh, is a perceived problem, not a real one, in my opinion, anyway. Um, is it a great motorcycle? To me, it is. I ride a lot of bikes. Uh, it fits my riding style very well. And uh, having said all that, this has been uh, Fuzzy Biker, Ride of the Week. And uh, I'm going to shut this camera off and enjoy the rest of this beautiful Guthrie County. Check that out, huh? All right, y'all. Life is good. Get out there and ride. Wahoo! All righty, a little addendum to the whole thing. Uh, first off, oh, about uh, 70 miles of riding, hour and 45 minutes. A lot of good stuff there. Really enjoyed the ride. Uh, other one is uh, I've got this incredibly comfortable and warm and it, I really mean that comfortable and warm Royal Enfield jacket on. I just love this thing. I can't say enough good about it. I'm absolutely amazed at how how well it works. And on top of that, it's got abrasion resistant. It's got armor plates in the uh, elbows and shoulders and yada, yada, yada. Just love it. Next one is uh, Steve. I met you last, last week or week or two at Baxter Cycle. You had a Himalayan. You're from Omaha. That Himalayan of yours is equipped in a way that I like, and I'd love to do a video of it. Get a hold of me, would you? Let's do something. Hey, you guys, life is good. Get out there and ride. Wahoo!